Now let's move on to discuss the different layers of the skin, beginning with the most superficial or upper layer, the epidermal layer of the skin. We'll discuss the separate layers of the epidermis as well as the cell types found there. As we've mentioned, the skin is made up of two layers. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer in contact with the outside environment, and the dermis, which is the deeper inner layer. Although the epidermis is thinner than the dermis, it has more surface area. Now let's discuss the different layers of the epidermis. As shown in the image here, the epidermis is made of five layers. The stratum corneum on the surface, the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basal or the basal layer. There are a number of different cell types spread throughout the epidermis. The most predominant type being keratinocytes. Let's discuss each layer in detail, beginning with the most superficial layer, the stratum corneum. This layer is made up of approximately 25 to 30 layers of dead, flat keratinocytes. Lamellar granules provide lipid production that acts as a water repellent for this layer. This sublayer is continuously shed and replaced throughout life. The next layer of the epidermis is the stratum lucidum. This is between the upper stratum corneum layer and the next layer, which is the stratum granulosum. It's found typically only in the fingertips, on the palms of the hands, and the sole of the feet. This is the thickest portion of the skin. It's a 3 to 5 cell thick layer of flat, dead keratinocytes. The next layer, which is in all areas of the body, is the stratum granulosum. It's the third layer from the apical surface, and this is the site of keratin formation. Keratohyalin gives this layer its granular appearance under the microscope, and in this layer, cells undergo degradation of their organelles and eventually die, and proceed to the upper layers. The stratum spinosum is composed of many keratinocytes and it varies in thickness throughout different regions of the body. This layer is between the stratum granulosum and the stratum basal or the basal layer. The keratinocytes appear spiny and thorn-like in the stratum spinosum. This sublayer provides strength and flexibility. There can be keratinocyte cell division within the stratum spinosum and Langerhans cells and melanocytes reside in this layer. The fifth and deepest layer from the apical surface of the epidermis is the stratum basal or the basal layer. This layer is made up of a single cell thickness of either cuboidal or columnar cells. And within this layer are the skin stem cells that give rise to the other cell types. They constantly divide and are pushed up to the upper layers of the epidermis. The stratum basal is attached to the basal lamina. And in this layer are stem cells, melanocytes, and Merkel cells. There are different cell types within the different layers of the epidermis. The epidermis is made of keratinized stratified epithelium and it includes cells that are constantly dividing to replace the skin as it sloughs off during everyday activities. The four types of cells in the epidermis are Langerhans cells, melanocytes, keratinocytes, and Merkel cells. Within the epidermis, the keratinocytes produce keratin. This thickens the outer layers and provides the barrier function of the skin. The melanocytes produce melanin, and this serves to protect the skin from UV radiation from the sun. Langerhans cells initiate an immune response when the epidermis is injured. And Merkel cells participate in the sensations of touch and pressure. Skin pigmentation. Skin color is produced by melanocytes, because melanocytes produce the pigment melanin. Melanin is produced through a process known as melanogenesis. 
and the melanin is passed on to keratinocytes in vesicles called melanosome granules. The human skin has a similar number of melanocytes present between different ethnic groups. The difference between dark or fair skin is instead due to the activity of the individual's melanocytes. Skin color can be a measure of how healthy an individual is. And the color of the skin can change over time, such as with exposure to the sun, or rapidly, which is based on dermal blood flow. When the skin is exposed to sunlight or tanning bulbs, there's an increase in the production of melanin. And this is because melanin acts as a photoprotectant to the skin and body. The pigment itself absorbs UV radiation. The color or tone of the skin can change with large changes in blood flow to the dermis. For example, when an individual is scared or nauseous, the dermal blood flow can decrease and makes them look pale. Alternatively, with exercise and an increase in body temperature, this leads to an increased blood flow to the skin which can make some people look flushed with rosy cheeks. The skin can change in thickness in different regions of the body. The skin covering the body can be described as either thick or thin. The majority of the skin covering the body is thin, and that means it lacks the stratum lucidum layer within the epidermis. The skin on the palms of the hands, the fingers, and the sole of the feet is thicker than elsewhere in the body. And thick skin has the stratum lucidum layer as well as a much thicker stratum corneum on the surface. The skin also produces fingerprints. Fingerprints are unique friction ridges in the skin that are made up of interactions between two different components. Number one, epidermal ridges, and number two, dermal papillae. Epidermal ridges extend from the stratum basal into the dermis, and the dermal papillae extend towards the epidermis from the dermal layer. The friction ridges assist in gripping objects with the hand. The fingerprints produced by these friction ridges are unique and remain unchanged throughout life. 